Hey guys, today we'll talk about how to build a competitive Space Marine list. Not going into any details onto each particular chapter, just a generic Space Marine guide which will work for most of Space Marine chapters anyway. So whether you play Scars, Templars, Dark Angels, whatever, this video is going to be helpful for you. So firstly, let's talk basics, the faction rules and my general thoughts on how you should approach this task of uh, competitive Space Marine playing. Main Space Marine rule is Oath of Moment, which allows us to get full reels to hit and wound against one particular target each battle round. It means that we absolutely must have a way of delivering damage from point A to point B in order to utilize that. Unlike some other factions which are more about playing a secondary game, objectives game, just bouncing around your opponent space marines are mostly about just annihilating everything that is in front of you on the board which kind of sounds like space marines to me so no problem with that their doctrines are essentially our way of securing that damage delivery when situation on tabletop is against us so our fallback and charge and shoot ability once per game is a way for us to disengage from whatever situation we wound up in and then engaging in a better place or better mode moment. Same for advance and shoot, advance and charge. There are just our ways of delivering that damage. So our main focus point in this video is going to be finding that damage in our index cards. Considering that 10th edition is better suited for shooting because of multiple reasons. Firstly, more movement restrictions. The like minus one, two to move, minus two to charge, minus two to advance are very prevalent. So it's hard to move across the board, especially without help of deep striking. There are less charge modifiers available for those deep strikers a move is reduced generally across the board so like custody's bikes were 14 inch move they're now 12 inch move and so on and so forth a lot of units have lost some movement and the damage is generally higher on shooting now than on melee units Again, our goal is to build some reliable shooting stuff that can blow the opponent off the board. But don't get me wrong, I still believe that for an optimal list we must be present in the fight phase, especially considering some awesome stratagems that we have in the Gladius Task Force, like squad tactics allowing us to move d6 or 6 depending on the doctrine when something ends a move within 9 inches of our unit, which is very strong for melee stuff especially. Yes, it can be useful for shooting as well, but for melee units that actually usually go forward and are closer to the opponent. That's the gold stratagem right there. Only in death does duty end. For two command points, you can fight on death. On the chapter, allowing you to get lance, so plus one to wound on the charge, and also extra AP if you're in assault doctrine. So that stuff cannot be ignored. It's uh, half of our stratagems, and these are wonderful for melee stuff. Plus, sometimes you can actually need to go out there on the midfield objectives and uh, put something there that can withstand some firepower back and also stand up for themselves in the fight if they're charged so long story short don't bury the fight phase just yet by the way if you want to dive deeper into the competitive scene and need a tactical edge i've just opened up a vf miniatures patreon page there you can gain exclusive access to behind the scenes content personalized army list analysis hobby advice and even tournament prep for your particular event so if you like the content on this channel and want to support it and also get some extra buffs for your warhammer play check out the link in the description and thank you for your attention now let's talk about damage dealers and support units i'm not going to concentrate on hqs because those are essentially just attachments that you add to the unit to make uh, it do its thing better so we're going to talk about them along the way we have no problem with finding good quality damage output in space marine index thankfully as discussed before we need both melee and shooting so let's first talk about melee stuff i really like the the terminators with hammers all terminators are generally good now uh, just i personally feel that terminators with hammers are a bit nicer because of that devastating wounds ability they have on the thunder hammers with full rerolls that are available to you from oath you can get maximum output out of those devastating wounds and also the rapid ingress strategy really helps any kind of slow moving infantry brick yes you can still get uh, that minus <laughs> annoying minus two modifier from uh, something like the earth shaker battery that astro militarum have but you will at least be close enough to the opponent to have a decent chance of charging in 
captain would also be very good in the squad actually all captains are nice whatever squad you're building uh the their ability to give you a free command point free strategy you sorry is always good and especially for melee stuff because our only in death strategy costs two command points and also two other great strats for melee units like the counteroffensive to interrupt and the heroic intervention also costs two command points so having that free stratagem ability in your big melee brick is very efficient assault squads with jump packs i did not expect to see them uh, be this good in this edition but they were they actually received some nice buffs and they cost very little in points uh, 23 points per model and uh, with their four attacks each and the ability to get extra AP from honor the chapter stratagem and also you can add chaplain to the squad for plus one to wound you can get some reliable damage onto the target plus remember that they also deal mortal wounds from their hammer of wrath ability and statistically you're probably gonna get i would say around five or six mortal wounds from the charge just by the virtue of charging in and as you can imagine that out of sequence damage is very good because you might have finished off that lone operative uh, character for example or the remaining one or two models from another squad and now you can focus all of your attacks into another one in general space marines really struggle to do reliable mortal wounds to the target so i really like that combination plus chaplain also does mortal wounds in the fight phase so that unit of assault marines plus a chaplain can do some damage that will be probably more than you would expect from a unit of 10 relatively cheap marines the same reason as mentioned before a captain with a jump pack is also a good addition to the squad because uh, he gives them plus one to their strength which is very good for their strength four on the chain swords and also gives them an ability to use the stratagem for free probably one brick with a captain and another brick with the chaplain and use the honor the chapter on the captain's brick because you already get plus one to one with the chaplain blade guard guys are another nice unit to have they're cheap midfield brawlers they're good with just judicia or chaplain for different reasons obviously chaplain to circumvent their strength five uh swords and the judicia is great because of fight first i don't recommend uh, adding those characters unless you're running a full six-man squad because otherwise that'll be a waste uh so they are essentially you can run them in two options either a three-man squad the cheapest you can get for some midfield control and being annoying or a six-man squad with full character support whatever whichever character you prefer for your particular list now the brutalis dreadnought not the most efficient thing in the world but can do reliable damage with his six attacks to heavy targets because of strength 12 and full rerolls and also does mortal wounds on the charge for his own ability and you can also spend one cp for tank shock with him so do some more mortal wounds in addition very very good to have this thing just as a distraction unit and uh, if you can manage to deliver him with his eight inch move which is probably his biggest problem and i don't understand why they subtracted two inches from his movement for, uh, compared to ninth edition he was 10 inches and redemptor was eight redemptor stayed at eight inches but brutalis for some reason went back to eight so a good unit but probably needs a little points decrease because 220 points for him is a bit too steep i think that uh, around 180 would be a better spot by the way this video is being recorded before the september's data slate is released so the points prices are as of right now and very likely some of these things can change in the next update but the general premise of the video should stay relevant now shooting we have a quite a lot more options here with space marines desolation marines are terribly efficient both in and out of line of sight and they are a perfect target for the bolter discipline enhancement but i'm not going to concentrate too much on them because i think that they will be hit with a nerve hammer really really hard in the next update because they are arguably one of the most efficient uh, units in the game now and for some reason they've received a decrease in price in 10th edition even though they were really really good in 9th at the end of 9th so i don't know what was the law logic there so i think they will go back to their old points or or even possibly get even more expensive next the redemptor dreadnought uh, awesome all-rounder i've always been in love with this model i have three of them and i really really 
tried not to put three in each of my space main lists which is very difficult because i really like them and i think they're worth their price they're quite expensive 225 if my memory serves me well why i think their cost is justified is because they really do have quite good shooting with their plasma cannon and the devastating wounds from the onslaught cannon and some extra small fire also they're not bad in combat with five attacks 12 minus two three and also quite survivable with that minus one damage ability and two plus save and high toughness so having all that in one package does justify i think a price of 225 points yes i would like love the redemptor to go back to its uh ninth edition price of 185 something like that but to be frank, that's not the same model, it's not the same game now. And yes, obviously I understand that Redemptor might not be the most optimal or efficient model currently because they're, the efficiency and the um, balance now in 10th edition is quite off. So comparing Redemptors to something like a Wraith Knight is just not correct in my opinion so from what i expect is going to happen to the game's balance in the near future i think redemptors are here to stay as quite an efficient unit and choice for your army now inceptors they are very very good units they don't cost a lot i think 115 points for a unit of three and you can choose either an anti-infantry or anti-elites gun and both will be re-rolling their wound rolls because they're twin linked so uh, they are very efficient against whatever target you choose and the even though the uh plasma is hazardous i do somewhat think that plasma is a bit better for most applic applications unless you're trying to uh kill the enemy's desolation marines that are behind the ruin which in that case then you definitely want the bolters the best part about the inceptors is their three inch deep strike rule which allows you to pop up behind enemy lines and uh either destroy their indirect fire source like i just mentioned or grab the opponent's objective aggressors uh, you can throw a bucket of shots uh, into your opponent and you can get some unusually good synergy with uh, apothecary biologists who gives them lethal hits so you'll be wounding on sixes uh, also uh, with uh, bolter discipline if you put that on the biologists you will be uh, automatically wounding on fives to hit and also you will be getting sustained hits on fives as well from the bolt of discipline ability so that's just a crazy uh combination with a ton of shots and also you can bump up their ap by one uh, using the storm of fire strategy uh, the only problem here is that the whole combo works that well when you are in the devastating doctrine but thankfully we have we have adaptive strategy so we can spend another command point and just put the unit into a devastating doctrine even when and the army is not in devastator so the only problem you have to solve with them is delivery and we have some solutions for that in the index now eradicators they are essentially overriding nerfs to multi melters just because uh we are re-rolling all hits all wounds on all damage rolls and that essentially uh, circumvents the lower strength that we have now on multi melters they are also very good to be independent from oath because yes uh, it's awesome to have one target that you're going to be re -rolling own hits and wounds against for your entire army but sometimes you need to destroy more than one thing and that's where eradicators come in so you just put a full six man unit of them into something like a vehicle or a monster and that target will probably be killed or severely damaged next tanks uh all of them are pretty nice gladiators land raiders especially the land gladiator lancer and the land raider redeemer because lancer is just very efficient for the points and is also quite good in shooting against uh heavier targets and redeemer is great uh because of transport capacity and your ability to flame something to death especially in overwatch whirlwind is great as your indirect fire source and is quite cheap so there are a bunch of choices for tanks you can go for with space marines also a couple of honorable mentions uh the hell blasters are relatively efficient now and also don't suffer so much from their uh, ability to die from their own shots because you can f at least fire on death with them m most of the time and uh, you can also attach an apothecary to the squad to revive some of them.
And the Stern Guard are also a great uh, unit with very, very good output with their devastating wounds ability. Uh, my only problem with them is that uh, you essentially only have one instance of Bolter Discipline and you either have to use that on your Desolation Marines, on your Stern Guard or on your Aggressors. I personally gravitate towards Aggressors because first of all, they're not going to be nerfed into dust like the Desolation Marines will probably be nerfed. And... Uh, uh, they are fightier than the Stern Guard. So that's just my personal preference. But Stern Guard are also great with that buff. Now the support units, that's the stuff that allows our army to function better and uh, just amplifies the force. Firstly, you absolutely positively need, you just must have at least one, but I recommend to have two units of infiltrators in your army. There is too much dip strike nonsense now in the game just to ignore the fact that you have an extremely efficient uh, choice to hold objectives and keep holding objectives no matter what. Uh, the infiltrators, they are quite survivable because of their six up strikes are more survivable than instant intercessors are uh, they don't shoot well but who cares you're not there to shoot them and they will protect your objectives from something that wants to steal them like opponents in scepters or gene stealer cults or any other thing that wants to deep strike and deny you some primary or secondary points with addition of a Phobos Lieutenant, they become extra annoying with additional D6 of movement in your shooting phase. So you can sometimes uh, use an infiltrator unit aggressively. So if you have two of them, you can put one in the, on the home objective and another uh, infiltrated closer to opponent's lines and then charge something uh, from cover, something that your opponent doesn't really want to be engaged in combat. Secondly, Scout Snipers are some of the most efficient home objective scoring units in the game right now. You can uh, get them to be almost untargetable because they can only be targeted if your opponent's unit is within 12 of them. And you can also simultaneously threaten their characters with sniper rifles. Uh, that's why the new models that we've seen in the recent Warhammer community preview, uh, the, uh, the Scout unit that is the new version, does seem to have only one scout sniper rifle in it and we have also heard rumors that there will be less uh, units in the space main codex so i assume that the scout snipers unit is gonna go away and that's why i think that investing in them now is probably not the best idea at least wait until the codex space marine comes out and Hellstrike and Thunderstrike Storm Speeders, finally. They're both really, really good force multipliers for your army. So if you find yourself uh, having like that 160, 140 something points left, and you're thinking of what you can add into your list, that Storm Speeder can just be uh, the best choice because Hellstrike allows you to add AP for your army's attacks against an enemy unit. And the Thunder Strike allows you to add plus one to wound against the monster vehicle target in your opponent's army. So both are really nice depending on what is the structure of your list. And uh, the Thunder Strike I think is a bit more expensive, like 20 or 30 points. Uh, but also the plus one to wound buff is obviously a bit more powerful probably in most cases than plus one AP. Now here is my roster example. This is by no means the most competitive and powerful Space Marine list you can build. Uh, it's just something that I would be comfortable with running on a tournament. Uh, there is one thing that I would probably change here. Uh, looking at that now after I wrote it, I would probably swap that chaplain, uh, one of the chaplains into a captain and just find extra point, 15 points somewhere to do that. Uh, but other than that, I really like the idea here. So we have Apothecary Biologist who goes into the six man uh, aggressor squad, obviously, with the Bolter Discipline Enhancement. We have two chaplains with jump packs who, who attach to each uh, their own 10-man assault squad with jump packs. I'm not uh, going into details here onto the uh, war gear of each squad. You will probably figure it out yourself. Uh, just don't forget to add like two eviscerators into the assault squads and uh, stuff like that. Lieutenant in Phobos armor will attach to one of the infiltrator squad for the aforementioned tricks with movement. And uh, we also have a six man radicator squad which should go into reserves unless we are running a chapter with some other abilities. But 
again, we are considering going with the Gladius Task Force for the moment. And we have three units of three Inceptors, one with Bolters and two with Plasmas, uh, because, again, I think Plasmas are a bit more efficient. Another Infiltrator Squad and the Land Raider Redeemer to transport our six-man aggressor squad with Apothecary Biologists. So the idea here is that we have two big blobs of Assault Squads which fly across the board and uh, try to threaten stuff whilst hiding behind ruins. We have three units of Inceptors in Deep Strike who are ready to uh, jump down and uh, threaten the opponent's objectives and uh, artillery pieces they might have and also we have infiltrator squad to protect our home objective another infiltrator squad for some tricksy stuff and in the center of the board we have a land raider redeemer going 12 inches a turn and uh, not caring about anything in the world and probably disembarking the six-man aggressor squad which are going to annihilate anything they can see especially when they're plus one AP from the Storm of Fire and plus one AP from their own innate ability to have plus one AP against closest target and also the Land Raider Redeemer who can protect them from potential charges with the awesome Overwatch you're gonna have. So again, not the most competitive list here, but something that is really fun, I think, and can pose a threat to even some of the nicer and uh, more powerful armies out there i think so let me know what you think about this little guy that i've made i hope i have not missed some important stuff i might have because space Marine have so many data sheets that even when you have been playing the game for a while some things may slip your mind so let me know if i forgot something and i hope this video was useful for you and i'll see you next time